All right, I just hit record. We're live for chapter 10.1, solar system object. So we sort of already went over a lot of stuff in the solar system already, so some of this might be a review. But so if you don't want to be here, you do not have to. You can leave at any time. Here we go. That is the vocab. Honestly, I think we've done most of this vocab already besides astronomical unit. Um, which is just a unit of distance, and we're going to go over that in a couple seconds. I'm unmute. Um, 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 yeah, it's fine. Just don't talk. <laughs> All right, chapter 10.1, essential tasks. I changed questions to tasks, so by the end of this chapter, you have to do one of these in your notes. All right, you either have to compare and contrast the distance, size, and what the bodies like the planets are made out of describe the distance between objects in space or explain how gravity forms planets stars and solar systems so it's sort of complicated but you'll be fine all right so i put this in here i was gonna put like a worksheet with it but i decided to give you guys thursday off and instead i just posted it this right here is a live model of what the solar system looks like right now. And you can play with it, move it around, click on different things, learn things. It's really cool. Um, and on Wednesday's worksheet, there's a secret extra credit question. And if you get it right, I'm gonna give you 10 extra credit points on your test. So, ah. oh, but yeah, it's actually pretty hard. Um, but good luck with that. What? Read the comments. Yeah, read the comments. I'm going too fast. Got it. Got it. Got it. Too fast. Trying. Oh, wait, there's more people in the waiting room. Admit all. All right. This video is going to be. The gorillas will take over the world. Aha. You are now muted. All right. So. A light year is, a, we're just gonna talk about distances in space. So a light year is how long it takes light to travel one year. And how long it takes light to travel one year, Gianna, hello. We're going over notes because I didn't make my video yet. Is 9.5 trillion kilometers, which is really far. Like, I can't really describe it, but like this isn't to scale. Let me get my little pointer out. If we're describing how far away we are in this one light year. We're like here. A light year is very, very long. We do not use it to measure our solar system because a light year is so big, it's not even close to anything in our solar system. All right? So we do not use a light year. We only use light year to measure distances like in galaxies and stuff that are farther away than our solar system. It's so big. How dare you? I will get you for this. I don't even know what you're saying. All right, the one we do use in our solar system to measure distances is called the AU, which is the see, astronomical unit, AU. And how they came up with that was sort of simple. They just measured from the middle of the sun to the middle of Earth, and that's an AU. That's one AU, astronomical unit. And that's how they measure things in our solar system. They measure it in AUs. They don't measure it in feet or inches, AUs. And if you measured from, so from, there's 100,000 AUs if you measured it from one side of the solar system to the other. Um, it's quite large. Um, people don't really understand how big just our solar system is, not even our galaxy. But 150,000, no, not my bad. 150 million kilometers is one AU. So if you times that by 100,000, our entire galaxy or solar system, what is that? I can't even, I don't even know that number. I'm not that good. Maybe you guys can figure it out. Terminator. So you do have to know for the test that we measure distance in our solar system with the astronomical unit. And you do have to know that the light year is bigger than the astronomical unit. And those two things would be on the test for the quiz this week. The quiz is quite hard. AU does not mean alternate universe, sorry. All right, so just for some perspective of how things are spaced out in our galaxy, or not galaxy, I keep saying that, solar system. Oh, wait, go back, go back, go back, go back. 
So they put a football field on here and showed you the different things. If the sun was at the zero yard line for a football field, the first four planets would be in the first five yards, basically, which is sort of insane. Or first 10 yards, I guess. So it's very close together, close to the sun, the first four. Um, and we'll go over the different parts of the different planets today. Um, 100,000. That is not right. Uh, and then the next four are much further away and much more spaced apart. Um, and, but then even these pictures right here of the planets are not to scale. If you, we were doing the football field analogy, it says a, uh, one of the, like Jupiter would be the size of a little BB on the middle of a football field. You wouldn't even be able to see it. And the sun would be less than a golf ball on a football field. You'd barely be able to see it. So if you're walking around a football field comparing yourself to our solar system, you wouldn't be able to find the planets if you were just walking around. It would be almost impossible. Very hard to see things. Besides the sun. You can find the sun, but that's pretty much it. So basically that entire slide, there's nothing you need to know for the test. It's just you got to understand that our solar system is big, like all solar systems. All right. Now we're going to talk about the solar system itself. We're going to start with the sun and the planets. What time are you normally starting these? Uh, 9.15, but I didn't record this yet. That's why I'm doing this right now. Usually I wouldn't even do this, but I never actually recorded the notes. So this is the recording of the notes. So every solar system has one star, at least one star. That's why it's called a solar system. Some solar systems have more than one star. Um, our solar system has one star, and that sun, we call it the sun, it accounts for over 99% of all of the mass in our solar system, which is really sort of insane. Like all, It almost shows that almost 100% of all the mass in our solar system is the sun. All right? You have to know that uh, for the test. That's why I underlined that. And even though it, it accounts for over 99%, almost 100%, it is actually sort of like an average size, not even that big. There's a, like this one here. This is one of the biggest stars that we know. Of. Its name is Canis Majoris. There's bigger, but that's one of the bigger ones we know. And our sun, you can't even see it. They have to zoom in. It's a little speck. A little tiny speck. That's our sun. So, yeah, we're just sort of average. But we're sort of cool because even though we have an average sun, we're the only solar system known in the universe with life. Uh, despite, uh, yeah, I did that. All right, so then there's four inner planets, four outer planets. We're gonna talk about the differences between them. Uh, the four inner, you might've learned this in elementary school. Um, I think AU is useless. Sort of is sometimes, I, I, can, I can see that. Um, it's sort of arbitrary, but all the measurements, like we all, we make them all up, like a foot. Like, how do you know a foot is a foot? Then one day they're just like, all right, that's a foot. <laughs> all measurements of distance and time are sort of, you know, made up in a way, but I get it. I get it, I get it. Cool. All right, so the four inner planets are all rocky terrestrial planets. They're made of rock and metal, and they're also smaller than the outer planets. Um, they also have less moons than the outer planets, and we'll get that later. Um, and then the outer four planets are all gas. My brother called me, sorry. Um, the outer four planets all made of gas, mainly helium and hydrogen. They do have cores like solid cores, but the, most of it's made out of gas and they're much larger, have more moons. Wait, 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 what is an AU, Mr. G? It's okay. An AU is just a measurement of distance and it is the set, it, they measure it. It's from the, the center of the sun to the center of earth, that's one AU. No, it's not alternate universe full. <laughs> an AU is, the distance from the center of the sun to the center of earth. And then they use that, which is 150 million kilometers to measure different distances in the universe or not the universe, our solar system. They measure lots of distances in the solar system with AUs. 
Okay. I'm hungry. I got to Okay. Yeah. Um, all the outer planets also have rings around them. Saturn is usually the only one you can see, but all of them have rings. Um, and obviously, I mean, not obviously. So the further you go away from the sun, the bigger the, the orbit is around the sun. So the longer it takes for it to go around. No, we don't. We don't have a ring. Uh, only the outer four planets do. That'd be cool if we did. That'd be pretty. Um, but the outer four planets, or the farther you go out, the larger the revolution is. And the larger the revolution is, the longer it takes to go around. And so their years are longer. Um, we measure things in Earth years. So an Earth year is shorter than a Mars year. A Jupiter year is longer than an Earth year. So the further you go out, their years are longer. But we usually always measure things in Earth years. All right. All right, so there's besides the sun and the planets, which we'll get back into later. Why are you talking about cookie dough? Um, there's lots of smaller things, like one is a dwarf planet. You'll have to know about dwarf planets for the test. If we had a ring, it would be light green or blue. I will not, I think it would be just like white from the rocks and the reflection of it, like the moon, to be honest. It'd be cool if it was that color. Um, so dwarf planets are just basically planets that didn't make the cut. They're just not massive enough to have enough gravity to take everything in their orbit and make them just like a clear path. Um, like Pluto is technically big enough to be a planet. It just didn't clear its orbit of all the little rocks. So it's technically not. Um, there's five known dwarf planets and tons of other things in our solar system. You don't have to know the names of all of them. This does not say make, make <laughs> it's make, make. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yes, these are all like, you know, almost planet sized rocks. Um, okay. What else do you need to know? Uh, there's also other, the smaller things in our solar system, natural satellites, you know, them as moons, um, in the first four planets, Mercury and Venus have no moons, but earth has one and Mars has two. All right. After that, once you get to the outer planets, there's tons of moons. Like Jupiter and Venus, I think each have like 60 moons. We can get to it later. But yeah, they have a ton. And they're huge moons. They're not even tiny moons. Like Titan is one of the moons on the uh, Saturn is bigger than Pluto. It's ginormous. It could be a planet in and of itself. I have a question. 60, I thought they had seven. No, they have a lot, like a ton, a ton. All right, so we're, we'll get back to that later with the moons and the planets later. We'll do more on that. But even smaller than the dwarf planets and the moons are the things we've already talked about. It's comets, which are giant frozen balls of ice, basically. And as they get closer to the sun, they sublimate and that sort of tail comes off them and you can sort of see them in space. Comets obviously never come to earth. They're out in space and they orbit around the sun. Uh, asteroids can be ginormous like this one right here. That is a representation of how big a general asteroid is <laughs> like a big one. At least it could be, this is Los Angeles right here it is very big. And if one actually hit the earth, it could kill pretty much everything, um, especially because of how fast it's going. I'm not even answering any of those questions, no. Is that a boot? No, it's an asteroid. Uh, so they are very large, rocky bodies. Um, they're, not, they're made of rock and metals and not ice. If they were made of ice and rotated around, they'd be comets. Um, most of them are found in the, you can, you can leave whatever you want, um, in the asteroid belt. Uh, which is in between Mars and Jupiter. And that's pretty much it. They can be very large. They can almost be the size of planets sometimes, or dwarf planets. I wouldn't say planets. Um, meteoroids, they're just broken up asteroids. They're just smaller, that's all. And they can be the size of like little pebbles and dust usually. That's usually how big asteroids or meteoroids are. So meteoroids are the little tiny rocks that are in space. Once it comes into the atmosphere, 
that's when it burns up and becomes a meteor. And if by chance it makes it through the atmosphere into and hits Earth, once it hits Earth, it's now called a meteorite. And you do have to know the differences between meteoroid, meteor, and meteorite on the test two. Good luck with that one. All right, I'm gonna keep going because I don't want this video to be too long. And actually, I'm gonna skip this video because literally it is just describing the differences between what I just said. It's like the exact same thing. So we don't even need that. It's everything is in the last slide. So I'm gonna save some time. But this one's pretty cool. It's just showing you the different sizes of things. I wonder what my speaker is. Oh, I gotta turn on my speaker. I guess technically I don't, but. So some asteroid. Oh God. So some asteroids are the size of like humans, but like they get, get rid of you. They can get quite big. I'm just gonna skip through this a little bit. Get rid of the bad cut. Oh yeah. I'll just skip. You can see asteroids get quite big. And if one of these things were to, you know, hit us, it would not be good. And also, if you see a pattern here, as they get bigger and more massive, notice that they start to get round, like dwarf planets. The more massive something is, the rounder it becomes because of the gravity pulling in on all sides, just like a planet. Yeah, we would die. Yeah, we definitely would die. That's, that's actually, uh, I think that's a dwarf planet right there. That's not an asteroid. That's in the asteroid belt, though. I think it's considered a dwarf planet, though. All right, bye-bye. So they can get huge. Yeah, Ceres is uh, in the asteroid belt. It's not like flying around. We don't. It's not gonna hit us. Uh, but I, I think it actually is considered a dwarf planet. It's so big. All right, this video is important. We're gonna go over everything right after we watch it. But it's it's five minutes, so you know if you want to go get some food or whatever. This one's pretty important though. Hey, Moby, I think I see aliens. Oh, good morning. Thank you, left. Dear Tim and Moby, can you tell me all about the solar system from Sam? Well, the solar system is our home in the galaxy. It started out around four and a half billion years ago. Back then, our solar system was just a cloud of gas and dust, probably left over from the explosion of a star. Over millions of years, gravity drew a lot of this stuff together into clumps. The biggest was in the center, and everything else began to spin around it. Immense gravitational pressure built up at the core of this gigantic clump. Atoms began fusing together in a nuclear reaction that continues to this day. It became the sun, and its energy pushed away any nearby gas. That's why the inner planets formed mostly out of rocky material. Earth is one of these terrestrial planets. The outer planets were once rocky too, but their gravity captured the gas pushed away by the sun. They formed the gas giants, like Jupiter. The sun is not all that big compared to other stars. But for us, it's the most important one around. The eight planets in our solar system are satellites of the sun. That means they travel around it in an orbit. The four inner planets are much smaller than the four outer ones. Mercury is closest to the sun, and it kind of looks like our moon. It spins really slowly, just one and a half times for every trip around the sun. That's why one side gets so hot and the other gets so cold. No, you couldn't go there. You'd probably melt or freeze. Venus is sometimes called Earth's sister planet because of the similar size. Its atmosphere is filled with carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. That means it traps the sun's heat. The surface of Venus can get close to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, you definitely melt on Venus. The third from the sun is Earth, where we live. It's got perfect conditions for plants and animals, not too hot, not too cold. That means lots of liquid water, which all life depends on. 
Mars is called the red planet because of its reddish surface. That's caused by the high iron content in Martian rocks. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. It also has the tallest mountain in the solar system, Olympus Mons. It's nearly three times the height of Mount Everest. Although it's cold and dry now, scientists think Mars was once much more like Earth. It likely had oceans and rivers, and its atmosphere contained more heat trapped in gases. The four outer planets are really far from the sun, so they're much colder. Jupiter is the largest of these gas giants. Its rocky core alone is at least 10 times bigger than Earth. On its surface, there's a permanent storm called the Great Red Spot. It's way bigger than our entire planet, and it's been raging for centuries. Around Jupiter, there are almost 70 moons. The first were discovered hundreds of years ago by Galileo Galilei. They're called the Galilean moons, and they're almost like little planets. Saturn is another gas giant, about 100 times more massive than Earth. You probably know Saturn by its amazing set of rings. They look smooth from a distance, but up close you can see they're made of chunks of ice and rock. Saturn has more than 50 moons orbiting it. The biggest, Titan, is one of the only moons with a thick atmosphere. Uranus is a gassy planet with small gray rings and more than 25 moons. It's so tilted that it looks like it's lying on its side. Some astronomers think a huge collision in its early days might have done that. Neptune is the farthest planet in the solar system. Like Uranus, it's sometimes called an ice giant because it's so cold. It was named after the Roman god of the sea, probably because it's so blue. There's a stormy great dark spot on Neptune that's kind of like the great red spot on Jupiter. Right, the solar system isn't just planets in the sun. There are lots of smaller bodies floating out there too. Asteroids are pieces of rock, centimeters to hundreds of kilometers wide. Most of them are concentrated in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Then there's poor old Pluto, a cold, rocky body even smaller than our own moon. It was considered a main planet until 2006, when it got demoted to a dwarf planet. Pluto has an odd orbit that sometimes brings it closer to the sun than Neptune. It also has at least five moons. By the way, Pluto isn't the only dwarf planet. Others include the asteroid Ceres and an object named Eris, which is almost as large as Pluto. Comets are totally different than asteroids. They're clumps of ice and dust that each have a unique orbit around the sun. When it gets close to the sun, the dust and ice form long, wispy tails that you can sometimes see from Earth. Scientists think that comets come from far regions of the solar right. system. Never mind. That's good enough. You guys aren't responsible for that. All right. So there's a lot in there. And I wanted you guys to have the video just in case my explanation doesn't make any sense. What the heck are you guys talking about? My goodness, Elena. I didn't know you had a dark side. I'm just kidding. All right, so we are gonna talk about from the beginning, not the very, very beginning, but the beginning of our solar system. So in the Milky Way galaxy, in one of the arms, there's just this bunch of gas, um, a, a cloud of gas of mainly helium and hydrogen atoms and a bunch of other different atoms. And this gas, you know, started, you know, smacking into each other, sort of co collecting. And then eventually they had enough mass to have gravity and then they started pulling in different other different atoms and all the atoms started coming together because of gravity. So you gotta know that gravity is pretty much the main reason why everything in our solar system formed. All right, but first, gravity pulled together, these atoms started building up more and more pressure, more and more density, and then rubbing against each other and they created heat. Um, from colliding with each other and that it's, it kept building up and building up until the atoms started fusing together and creating nuclear fusion. At this point, when the atoms started creating nuclear fusion, the sun was born, all right? That's when the sun first was born. That's how a star is born, is when atoms come together because of gravity. That one I don't know. I do not know how, I should have researched that, how long it takes to actually make the star. Um, you're not required to know that. Honestly, that probably is like a high school thing, at, at least. Well, probably more than that, actually. 
um, because I'm going to go over in a second that the planets themselves actually take about a hundred, our planets took about a hundred million years to make. And I'll go over that in a second. So once that star is continuously go, not just once or twice, but continuously going through nuclear fusion from fusing together all these atoms, it starts to emit electromagnetic radiation, which is, you know, in a way, sunlight and other forms of radiation. And at that point, that's our star born. But at that point, you know, it's bright and stuff like that, but it didn't absorb all of the gas around, right? So some of the gas that was out in our part of the solar system is still out there orbiting the sun. Here, I'll get a big better picture. I'll come back to this. So I'll come back to that. I want a picture so you guys understand. So here it is. It had a bunch of gas and then the star was born, but there's still gas all in there. It's not very clean. So the remaining particles and atoms of helium and hydrogen and other different atoms started, you know, clumping together the exact same, sort of the same way the star was made. There just wasn't as much of it. And that's when, you know, they started coming together with gravity. They made planets and the planets slowly start to be made. Let me go back now. Did I go the right way? Yeah, I went the right way. All right. So just like it says here, they swirled around. Uh, each planet began as microscopic grains of dust, little atoms. Each planet was dust at one point. And then at some point in our solar system, there were so many planets. There's probably more than what we had now. But because there's so much more dust and they're pulling in gravity and stuff like that, it took hundreds of years and they would collide with each other. And it was almost like a, a giant battle to see who would end up as the final planets. And stuff like this would happen where planets would literally collide in with each other. And when they're very young, most of the planets were still made of molten rock and stuff like that. They weren't like hard yet. Um, so it's sort of cool if to, you know, watch, I'm sure you can find videos about it and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. And then once all of their orbits were completely clean, there's no more gas, no more dust, no more atoms in space. They, they pretty much use their gravity to suck it all up. That's when they legitimately become a planet. And Austin, you have a legitimate question. Hopefully it's good. Go ahead. So in the SpongeBob movie, the planets collided together, right? I, I think. I don't really remember. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I actually did go to the movie theater to see it. But yes, go ahead. Oh, you mean like the universes? Like, no, you're kidding me. Yes, I get it. Thank you, Austin, for that valid contribution. All right, so this also helps us explain the inner and outer planets. So after the sun was made, it started like shooting out its electromagnetic radiation and it, it something called solar winds. And the solar winds took all of the, the, the gases and the liquids or the, the atoms that were very light, they weren't very heavy, and they shot them out to like away, all right? And that's why when it, the, the solar winds pushed out all of the, the, the lighter stuff and the heavier stuff stayed close, that's why the outer planets are made, I don't understand SpongeBob either, the outer planets are made of the gases because the sun pushed away the lighter stuff to the outer parts of our solar system and the heavier atoms, which made the rocky planets stay closer. That's why, because when the sun was made, it pushed away some of the particles with its uh, nuclear fusion and solar winds. So you actually do have to know that uh, for the test. I made it quite easy. I made it a true or false question. So those of you in here who are watching this will get that one. And it's just asking like why, the reason why the outer planets are made of gas is because solar winds push the lighter particles outwards. That's all. And that's why. Um, once again, these, these still have rocky cores in it. In the middle, there's still like a solid core. What are the outer planets and inner planets? The inner planets, we're going to go over each one. So just hold on and we'll go over the names and all about them in a second, Jade. Yes, sir. Um, I need help with the, the exit ticket thingy. After the notes, bud. I will go over everything if you want. All right? Just one question. Go ahead. I'll be nice. Um, 
When a meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere, friction causes it to burn up and produce a streak of light called what? Meteor. Once it comes into the atmosphere and starts that streak, it's called a meteor. Yes, Elena, I'm unmuting you because I'm assuming this is actually a good question. Wait, I'm trying to unmute you. All right, go ahead. When nuclear, wait, so when a nuclear fusion happens, that's why, like, the other planets are made out of gas? Yep, well, basically, the nuclear fusion, you know, and the so it's the solar winds, really, that come from the sun. Um, it sort of pushes out energy, and it, push, it pushed out the lighter atoms towards the outside of our solar system. That's why the outside planets are gas planets, because it pushed all the light, gassy atoms to the outside, and the heavier atoms stayed on the inside. So you do, I mean, you don't have to know the order or anything. You do have to know that gravity is the main reason why everything was created. Without gravity, planets wouldn't form, stars wouldn't be made, solar systems wouldn't be made. There would just be a cloud. There would be nothing coming together. It would be one giant cloud. All right. And also, you do need to know that our solar system was made about 4.5, 4.6 billion years ago. Long time. Let's see. I'm trying to think of anything else you need to know. No, that's pretty much it. And if, uh, let's see, you guys can just put your fingers up. I uh, know. Well, basically, I'll just go quickly since we don't have the time. But so if you were given the set of pictures, which one would be first? This one? This one? Yeah, this one, because it has no star, yep, and it's just a bunch of clouds and atoms and gases and stuff like that. So which one would be second? This one? Yep, because it's still, it, the sun just got created, and then it still has a bunch of the gases. Which one would be third? Yep, and then planets, you can see the little planets start to form, but there's still, like, stuff in their orbit, and then once it's all clean and vacuumed up, that's, that's like ours, all right? If, if it wasn't all clean, like, you would, we wouldn't be able to see, there would be no black space. You would see, like, the gas is all in our space. But that wouldn't happen since everything has a lot of mass and gravity. Um, do I want to show you this? Yeah, I'll show you this. Jaden, this is going to answer a lot of your questions about the inner and outer planets and the differences between them, all right? Our solar system is one of over 500 known solar systems in the entire Milky Way galaxy. The solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago when a cloud of interstellar gas and dust collapsed, resulting in a solar nebula, a swirling disk of material that collided to form the solar system. The solar system is located in the Milky Way's Orion star cluster. Only 15% of stars in the galaxy host planetary systems, and one of those stars is our own sun. Revolving around the sun are eight planets. The planets are divided into two categories based on their composition, terrestrial and Jovian. Terrestrial planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are primarily made of rocky material. Their surfaces are solid. They don't have moon systems, they have very few or no moons, and they are relatively small. The smallest and closest to the sun is Mercury, which has the shortest orbit in the solar system at about three Earth months. Venus is the hottest planet, with temperatures of up to 867 degrees Fahrenheit, due to an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and extensive lava flows. Next to this world of fire is a world of water, Earth. The water systems on this planet help create the only known environment in the universe capable of sustaining life. We're number one. <laughs> the last of the terrestrial planets, Mars, might have also supported life about 3.7 billion years ago when the planet had a watery surface and moist atmosphere. Beyond the four terrestrial planets of the inner solar system lie the Jovian planets of the outer solar system. 
The Jovian planets include gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The gas giants are predominantly made of helium and hydrogen, and the ice giants also contain rock, ice, and a liquid mixture of water, methane, and ammonia. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, sport ring systems, have no solid surface, and are immense. The largest Jovian is also the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter. Nearby is Saturn, the solar system's second largest planet. Its signature rings are wide enough to fit between Earth and the moon, but are barely a kilometer thick. Past Saturn are the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The slightly bigger of these ice giants, Uranus, is famous for rotating on its side. Next to Uranus is Neptune, the outermost planet in the solar system and also one of the coldest. Orbiting the terrestrial planets is the asteroid belt, a flat disk of rocky objects full of remnants from the solar system's formation, from microscopic dust particles to the largest known object, the dwarf planet, Ceres. Another disk of space debris lies much further out. Uh, you guys don't have to know what else is outside our solar system. So I call this the Pokedex of our solar system. Um, so I'm going to... I'm gonna make it a little bit easier. It's sort of hard to see. I'm gonna click on it and we're gonna go over just the basic, the, the big differences between inner and outer planets and the different ones. All right, we're gonna go real quick. So, inner planets obviously are the first four. They're all rocky. Um, they are warmer than the outer planets, obviously, because they have more direct sunlight. Um, but you would think Mercury being the closest would be the hottest. It's actually not. Um, a large part of this is because it has no atmosphere. It can't hold the heat in. So during the daytime, it's very hot, 430 degrees Celsius, which is like ugh, like 600 some degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. Um, but at nighttime, on the opposite side, um, it's like negative 170 degrees Celsius. Very, very cold. You'd freeze and melt in like the same day, um, which is sort of crazy. Very close to the sun, but yes. Um, Venus is the hottest. You do have to know Venus is the hottest planet. And that's because it has a ginormous atmosphere with a bunch of carbon dioxide. Remember the greenhouse gas keeps the heat in. And since it has, keeps the heat in and there's literally the floor is lava in Venus. <laughs> um, that's why it's the hottest. It's like 867 degrees like daily. Um, Earth, I don't know what, do not listen to that there. Earth is not the only one with the moon. Earth has one moon and Mars has two, but neither of the front two have moons. You do have to know that Mercury and Venus are the only ones in the solar system without moons. That's the test question. You're welcome. Yeah, I said it. Yes, Elena. Wait, I can't unmute you. There you go. I tried. There you go. Is that on the video? Like, are you still recording? Yeah. Okay. It's on the video. Everything I'm talking about right now is on the video. All right, let's see. Obviously, Earth is the only solar or only planet with water that we know of currently. They thought Mars used to have water a long time ago, but we are in like the sweet spot, not too hot, not too cold. Um, so we're the only one that is really even capable currently of having water, really. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Nope. You do need to know that as you go further out, the, their years get longer, and all of these are made out of rocky metals. They're not made of gas or anything like that. All right. Now, the outer planets are called the Jovian planets. I don't really know. I should have researched that. Why? The first two are the gas giants, and the second two are the frozen giants. They're frozen giants because they're so cold there. Uh, they have a ton of moons. Like I told you, Jupiter has 67 moons. Saturn has 62 moons. It's sort of a lot. Uh, they're all made of gas, mostly hydrogen and helium. And that's sort of a test question, too. The main ingredient for our entire solar system, and probably for the entire universe, are those two main atoms, helium and hydrogen. That's what most suns are made out of. Most stars are made out of helium and hydrogen. Um, if you know like anything, I've seen any science videos about like the, the hydrogen balloon. Uh, they blow up. They're very explosive uh, atoms and molecules. 
helium and hydrogen, they burn and blow up. So they're very good for that. But you do have to know that most of our solar system is made of hydrogen and helium. There's a lot even in our planet. What is that? Interesting. Um, and just a fun fact, you don't need to know this, but I told you as we go further out, the, the, the revolution takes a long time. For Neptune, the furthest planet out to go all the way around takes 83 Earth years. So basically, I could be born and die before Neptune makes it around the sun once. Let's see, anything else that I would need you guys to know here? No, I made the, I, I talked about the most important things here. Mostly gas, obvi uh, they have a, a very large, does it say here? They have a lot of gravity. Jupiter has a ton of gravity, it has a ton of mass, it's very massive, same with Saturn. Um, all these ones out here, even though they're made of gas, they have a lot of mass. Gas still has mass, you know. Hey, I rhymed. That joke is old, so I don't even know what. Okay. Um, do I want any, you guys even watch this? Um, no, I don't need you to watch this one. Uh, okay, you can watch the first five seconds. So basically, this is just trying to help you guys understand how big our universe is, really, for the first what couple seconds. It's the fastest thing we know. The fastest thing we know. It's so fast that we measure enormous distances by how long it takes for light to travel them. In one year, light travels about six trillion miles, a distance we call one light year. One light year. To give you an idea of just how far this is, the moon, which took the Apollo astronauts four days to reach, is only one light second from Earth. One light, it takes one second for light to go from Earth to the moon. It takes eight seconds from the sun to Earth and it takes us four days to get there. The nearest, and I'll, I'll, let me play it. Meanwhile, the nearest star beyond our own sun is Proxima Centauri, 4.24 light years away. Our it takes one second for light to get to our moon and 4.24 years to get to the nearest sun. If you sort of like average that out, if we tried to take a spaceship like the Apollo 11 and tried to make it to the next solar system, I think it would take us 22 million years to get to the next solar system with our current technology, which is sort of crazy how big everything is. All right, this one's super cool. This is one of my favorite videos. Actually, I'm gonna go to this one. There's two of them. This one, all right, I think this stuff is so neat. Um, let me know if you think it's cool too. This is just so you guys can understand how big or small we are. And I'm going to skip through a little bit to right here. All right. We're going to start off with moon. Obviously, there's things smaller than our moon, but we're just going to start off there. Just showing you how big things are. Mercury, our smallest planet. Ganymede. Mars. For a long time, I thought Mars used to be like the same size as Earth, but Mars is actually half the size of Earth. It's pretty tiny. Venus is very close to our size, almost identical. Kepler is a planet in a very close uh, solar system. It's not in our solar system. There's Neptune. It's the eighth planet. And Uranus is very close to the same size. No, it's not lagging now. Sorry. Saturn, very big. This is not our sun. This is a one of the smallest suns that we know of. That's the smallest they pretty much get. Jupiter. Now, that is the largest planet we know of. I thought it was the sun at first. That planet is ginormous. All right, this is our sun. And I don't know if you remember, but we're like a little speck down here way back here, we're like a speck. Yep, these are all the suns now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're like, I can't even tell you how tiny. Wait, wait, I think I can. Where is that? Grab this. Yep. We're still going. We're like that down there, that little blue dot. We're not even that blue dot. <laughs> 
That's that Beetlejuice thing that your dad was talking about, Edward. This was that, wait, wait, can I stop it there? All right, that Canis Majoris was that one and I showed you that video or that photo earlier that our son was that little speck. These were these are bigger stars, but the couple to the left, those are what normal stars are. Ours are actually, is actually a pretty medium size. It's not even that big. All right, and then it's gonna stop here, I think. That's one of the biggest stars we know of. And it's gonna, it's trying to show you what a light year is. So that's not even a light year yet. That's a light day. And remember, it takes 4.2 light years to get to the next star, to, to the next star. Four light days, five light days. It's not even a year yet. And remember, 4.2 light years with our current technology would take us 22 million years to get to. That's a light year. There we go. All right. We're going out a little further. We are just one of those little lights. And hundreds of billions of stars just in our galaxy. Each one of them has one planet, at least, usually. And that's just in our galaxy. And we didn't get to galaxy yet. So we are just one galaxy too. And we're the Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> so this is just us. We're we're like we're like right here. No dot. And now that's just one galaxy. And there's that's the closest galaxy to us. It's called Andromeda. We can see it with a telescope. And then there's hundreds of millions of galaxies. Yeah. <laughs> you think it stops there? No. That's a lot of light years. Yeah. You're, I mean, like, honestly, when I say we're a speck of sand, that a speck of sand is too big. We're still going. <laughs> billions and billions of galaxies. We're not even sand. However, if you want to think of it super cool though, there's a couple ways, and then this is, and that right there is how much of the universe that we can see. After that, we can't see farther than that. And a couple of cool things to just think about after that is that one, yeah, it seems like we're pretty insignificant, but we're like, the, the chance, one, the chance of life being somewhere else and all that, probably pretty high at the same time to realize how rare like life is and how perfect the conditions need to be made for us to even be here is crazy cool like we are like the one in a billion 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 like like the lottery has nothing on what we are on earth it's sort of cool and you can look stuff up like that like scales of the universe and stuff like that and there's a bunch of different ones like this, and it's it's pretty cool. I wish we could have done something like this in class. Yeah. Um, it, that video is in the notes, right? Yes, it is. Um, and I played it right now, so you can watch it after I'm done recording this. Um, so, so that's pretty much everything. The key takeaways from everything for the test. Um, you have to know the, the big differences between the inner and outer planet. You have to know what created the sun and the planets, mainly gravity um, and nuclear fusion. Um, you have to know inner planets are rocky planets, outer planets are gas planets made of helium and hydrogen. You have to know the differences between asteroids, meteors, comets, 
meteorites. You have to know dwarf planets. You have to know, you know, which planets have moons and which don't. The only ones that don't are Mercury and Venus. You have to know the difference between light years and astronomical unit as far as astronomical unit is smaller than a light year. You don't have to know the exact size, really. Um, and you have to know how they measure an astronomical unit, which is a from the center of Earth to the center of the sun. Yeah, you, get, you should look it up. It's pretty crazy, that stuff. Um, it, it makes us feel pretty small, but at the same time, we're very special. Like, very, very special. Like, it's quite amazing to feel honored. <laughs> um, like, for everything to be so perfect as it is, like, the fact that we don't have asteroids crashing into us all the time, that we have an atmosphere, that we're perfectly placed in a perfect sun. Like, if we were by those other suns, that would be too massive and too much gravity, and we would get sucked in. Yeah. You know? It's like there's all these different things that make us literally – perfect for what we are literally perfect yeah sorry i apologize it's 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 neat um, you know wait, 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 wait. It, it does like when you understand how like you guys were grown up at least in your science class in elementary school as you see these pictures where mercury is so close to venus which is so close to earth which is so close to each other but in reality everything is so far apart and things are so ginormous that it, you can't put it in a picture. All right, one sec, I gotta stop the recording. Mr. G? One second, wait one sec.